Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. And all my life I've been an animal artist. I've always, that was my first love. I love drawing and painting birds and, and wildlife and all kinds of things. And then as I grew older uh, and became an animator, melding those two together was really cool for me because not only was I learning to create life through acting and emotion and those types of things, but I got to really kind of play with the analytical side of animation, which is the mechanics of animal movement, four-legged walks and, and bird flight and all that kind of stuff that I was always interested in as a kid, but now I had the skills to actually move things and figure out the physics. And one of my biggest pet peeves <laughs> when I go and watch a film that, you know, there's a lot of compositing going on and they've thrown in different things and, you know, here and there. And I don't know why this is, but my, and I, it's just be me, be, it's me being an animation nerd. But um, a lot of times I see birds in the background that have been animated to kind of give the background life. And they're really badly animated because someone didn't sit down and really think about the mechanics. And so I thought I'd just do something real simple today and just talk about bird mechanics. I know it's really specific, but for me, um, I've always been interested in that sort of thing. And I thought you might, might be as well. Um, a bird doesn't simply fly by having its wings up and flapping and bringing them down and bringing them up again. That's the first mistake people make. Um, you know, there's, there's physics to it, there's aerodynamics to it. And, and it's not a whole lot to figure out. It's not a lot to understand. Um, and then if you put that into your animation, then it, it, it gives it that much more life. And that to me, life is in the details. You know, when we're animating something, we are creating life through acting and through emotion and all of that. But if you don't have good physics to go along with that, it doesn't sit in our world or it doesn't sit in the world that you're trying to create. And so it's always important to be not just a student of acting and theater and, and emotion and those types of things, but also be a, a student of the world, meaning, you know, look around you. How do trees move in the wind and how do, you know, cats walk? How do dogs walk? How do birds fly? What are the mechanics uh, behind those things? And then you can apply them to your work and it makes whatever you're animating that much more believable. So anyway, that's a, a long explanation for why I wanted to talk to you about uh, animating birds today. Um, so here you can see I'm using uh, TV paint today. Um, I love using TV paint. For those of you not that know me, I, I use it exclusively when I'm doing hand-drawn animation. And what I've done is I've, I've got an eagle here with the wings up and I've got a drawing with the wings down. I've just done two drawings and we're gonna, I'm gonna take you through and, uh, and we're gonna work out the mechanics of a bird flying. And in this case, it's an eagle, which will be a little different than say an albatross, which is a big seabird that has very long wings and they're much more gliders and they, they flap their wings just a little bit differently, but, and, and hum hummingbirds obviously are different. So there's a lot of variations within the bird world and it's good to understand it all, but this is something that's pretty typical. And uh, so I wanna go over it with you. Um, the first thing I'm gonna talk about just a little bit of about the physics of flight, just a touch. And it's, um, it's very simple. You know, when, what gives an airplane lift? You know, when you look at the wing of an airplane from the end, looking straight down, a cross section, it's shaped like this, okay? The reason it is shaped like that, and it gets it, you know, it, the inventors of flight got it from the animal world. There's something that happens with this airfoil shape. As air passes over the wing and through, you know, as, as the wing goes through the air, air is going this way. And so as it flows under the wing, it goes basically in a straight line. But as it comes over the, <coughs> over the wing, you can see that it has to travel a further distance. This curve creates a further distance that that air needs to travel. And what that does is it creates negative pressure. It creates a low pressure area above the wing, and then this becomes high pressure underneath. And so when you have, just naturally, when you have a high pressure area and a low pressure area, that high pressure is gonna push into that low pressure to fill it. And so that's what happens here, and that's what creates lift. This high pressure pushes up 
against the wing to fill that low pressure and it creates lift. And that's how you get, very simply, that's how you get lift with flight. And a bird's wing is shaped like that. If you look at a bird's wing from the cross section, it's got that shape to it, just like an airplane wing. So that's the first thing to understand. That's how we get lift. Now there's gonna be mechanics to the actual flapping of the wings and how they get thrust. And that's what I wanna go over with you today. So let's jump over to my animation software, TV Paint, and let's just dive into it. Let's start with the upstroke. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna add a drawing right here. And what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead, I'm gonna turn on my light table. So now I can see the drawing before and after. And right now I've got three drawings here. You can see on the timeline, I've got three. The reason I'm doing that, I'm gonna do a little bit of cheating today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase back these wings. I'm gonna leave the body for now. Actually, I'm gonna erase back the tail too. But just so I don't have to keep drawing that head and body over and over again, I'm just gonna do it this way and cheat. And then what I can do is I can move it just slightly and we got a little bit of an in-between right there. Hit return and back to my pencil. So now, if I scrub back and forth, you can see that body kind of move up and down right there. So let's start with the upstroke. So we're, we're starting with that upstroke. What happens? Well, as the bird flies, it's pumping air down. It has to, it ha that's what the, the downstroke is the thrust. So as it comes down into the, into that bottom, into the bottom of the, the, the stroke, it's got to create thrust. And so that's where, that's the, that's the power stroke. So the, what it's doing is it's scooping air and pushing it back as it creates momentum going forward. Okay. And also I'm going to, real quick, I'm going to jump back to the, to the, to our, uh, airfoil here. Bur a bird's wing is built from a, a comparative anatomy standpoint. A bird's wing is very similar to our arm. Think of a bird's wing as like this. There's the elbow, which is right here, and it comes up to the wrist, and then the feathers come off the wrist. Now there's only a couple of fingers there, but it, it's basically like that. There's the thumb and a couple of fingers, and you've got the wrist, and it's just like that. And imagine the feathers coming off my arm. That's exactly how a bird's wing is. So if I draw the bird's wing, comes out, comes like this. And you can see it, you know, if, if any of you ever have chickens, chicken wings, you can see it. And I guess it has skin here. But just like us, there's the elbow right here. And into that, basically the wrist right here. And then the wings, the feathers, come off of here like so. And they come up like that. And there's a bunch of different feathers that come along here. These, along here, these are the primary feathers right here. They give all, you know, in the downstroke, they're the ones that are responsible for that big power stroke. And then these are the secondaries all along here. Okay. Now different bird species have different numbers of feathers, but usually it's 10 and 10. You can, that's a good number to start with, but you know, other birds that have really long wings like pelicans and albatross and things like that, they'll have a whole bunch of feathers there. Another thing I want you to understand with a bird, and a lot of this is, <laughs> you can categorize it as useless trivia, but you know, I, I love it. So you're stuck with me. <laughs> the feathers are actually overlaid in a specific way for a specific reason. If you're looking at the end of the, uh, once again, the end of the wing of a bird, the feathers, I'm just going to draw the end of a feather. The feathers lay this way. They overlap this way. Like so. If you're looking at the end. So if we're looking at, the, if, if this is the top of the wing, let's pretend this is the top right here then this feather goes, the front feather goes under the next feather, which goes under, all, they overlap in that way. 
always on every bird. And there's a reason for that. When you have a downstroke right here, what happens with these feathers if you have a downstroke? Well, this feather pushes into this feather, which pushes into this one, which pushes into this one, and they all press together and create almost like a paddle in the air. They scoop the air and, and they're able to push and pull it, push it back and create lift. And then on the upstroke, when you don't want resistance, the, the, the wings come up like so. And what happens? If you think about the air now being pushed down over the wing this way, this feather is free to go this way. This one's free to go this way. The feathers are free to separate and air can flow through and there's no resistance. So there's no resistance coming up and then they come back down, the feathers get pressed together. Boom, you get a big scoop. And that's a big part of the evolution of a bird's wing is that is the ability to do that, okay? And then once again, obviously, when they, once they get their power and their forward momentum, then they can outstretch their wings and glide and they create lift as well just through the shape of the wing, okay? So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that. There's your elbow, wrist, and the way the feathers are laid out. Let's jump back to our animation. So, all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and bring right here this wing is coming down and as it's scooping, it scoops a bunch of air. And what's happening? It also pushes these feathers up, these big primaries right here. Okay? Now I'm not gonna draw every feather because it'll just take us forever to draw every feather. So I don't wanna do that. And then once again, I'm gonna come over here Thinking about the elbow into the wrist and up here, there, there. And that air is scooping. It's pushing those feathers up like so. So you get that effect, okay? So now you can see there's a big scoop of air. Now I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it right here so we can cycle right back into that upstroke. So let's go ahead and add a drawing right here. And once again, I'm just gonna erase these feathers back. So now we're gonna go, whoops, I'm gonna erase this back too. So this is important. The downstroke, everybody pretty much gets that. The wings are outstretched, they push down, you know, they inflate with air and they push down <clears throat> and that pushes air back. This is the part that a lot of people miss. When the wings come back up, think of the arms as kind of going like this. Like they come up, they, they, you want as little air resistance as possible. So they're trying to get those wings back up and into a, a starting position again. And so they got to come up like so. And that's where those feathers separate. The air is able to flow through. There's less resistance. Re resistance. Then they can come back up and flap. And so that's what we're going to do here. So we're thinking about, okay, this wing is coming down, coming down, and it's going to come back up like so. So as it comes up, it's bending its arm, basically. Let me erase that back. Like so. Here. So it's bending at the elbow. A lot of people don't realize a bird has an elbow. Right there, it bends at the elbow. So here, the feathers are going to start to come back in. Like so. You see that? So here the wings are just starting to come up. Like so. 
And you'll notice, notice the feathers change on the ends of the wing. I'm keeping this very rough. There. So here, you'll see the start of the, how those wings start to come up, like so. Let's go ahead and add another one in there. We're just going to keep adding drawings, and I'm going to start, I'm just going to keep talking about the mechanics as we, as we move up through. So let's go ahead and we'll just get a guy in there. And once again, I'm going to erase back these wings. There we go. Actually, I've been forgetting to animate the tail. I'm going to have to go back and we'll get the tail in there. I've been blabbering on about the body so much, or the wings so much. Okay, so here we've got the wings coming up. So here, in this next image, we come up. And I'm going to bring the wings back just a touch, bending at the elbow, just like that. But here, in this wing here, they're, it's kind of coming towards us. I'm going to erase this back. Let's go ahead and get our, our in-between right. There we go. And here at the wrist, we're going to see this part of the wing. And it bends down. Like so. And what we're also getting is a separation of the feathers right through here and may, they might even overlap a little bit in this direction like so and we'll come back up for the rest of the body there's a break in there There. It's a very odd look. This is all for it's le trying to get as little resistance coming over the, the wings as possible. So now when we when we scrub through, you can see how those wings come up. They bend at the elbows, bend at the wrist. Let's do another one. So as I erase these wings back, so now they can start in betweening into that back to the beginning pose. We can start to in between back into that beginning pose. I'm pretty much, we're pretty much doing drawing over drawing there, so I'm okay. Okay, so now we're going to come up. There we go. And the wing will still actually, we're going to see the underside of it because it's still letting air flow through right here. Still bent this way. We're coming up. We're getting a little bit of overlap in there, like so. Actually, I'm going to pull this back just a touch. 
And I want to see, might see a little bit of feathers there. No. I'm just going to throw it in like so. So here, what I'd like to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to pull this over. We're going to see a little bit of the top part of that wing. And I want you to see how these feathers separate. There we go. Like so. There. There. And it actually starts to curl around. There we go. Separate that out. There we go. So these feathers actually separate out to get the let the air flow through them. There we go. Like so. Let's go ahead and add another drawing in there. I'm just going to erase back these wings once again and keep the bodies so I can do this nice and quick. And as this wing comes up, now it's starting, it's going to start to straighten out. You can see the elbow starting to straighten out up into the wrist. Like so. We're still getting separation of the feathers through here, through up here. Because there's still, you know, you want those set feathers to separate as the wing is coming up. And it's going to be pushing down a little bit because the wings are pushing up. And here they're pointing back just a slight bit. There, see there? Once again, I'm doing this very quickly. You see how they, when they come up, there's less resistance and then they can pump the air as they go down. Let's go ahead and do another one. So this is going to come up. Now we can just start to let it in between right into that starting pose. I'm still going to point some of these feathers back. There we go. Bird flight. It's always fun to, to get the mechanics right. I always enjoy it because it, it, it's like you're emulating you know, the real world. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it sounds geeky, but it's really, it's really fun. There we go. You can see those wings are coming up, getting ready to start pumping the air back down. Like so. Let's go ahead and do another drawing in there because I'm going to have it slow into that. It's going up and it's going to push. So the wings coming up once again. And we're going to ease. We're going to ease into our starting position. Bird mechanics. Who'd have thunk that something so mundane as making a bird fly? could have all this stuff to it and it's really not that bad you know once you understand the aerodynamics and all that it's it's kind of fun to figure out and and then emulate there we go there we go like so so let's go back to the beginning because we need a few drawings added into here. 
So let's add a drawing here. So now, as the wings come down, they're going to come up, and now those feathers are going to start to reverse. So I'm going to bring this, and they stretch out. See how I'm reversing those feathers now? Because that air resistance is pushing them up. Like so. Same here. Right up into the wrist. And those feathers are being pushed up, 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 scooping the air, like so. Doing this very fast. There we go. So you can see, starting to scoop that air. Let's go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and add another in between. So those wings are starting to come down. But here, I wanna really reverse it. Reverse, reverse, there we go. See how that reverses right there? There we go. Ah. And reverse. Pull those feathers up. Scoop that air. See the light table function on here really helps. You can see that You can really feel that air now as he's flying. You can feel that, those mechanics. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and add a drawing in here because it's going to be a little harder pushing down. So it's going to go down a little harder. I mean, uh, a little slower. Now we're going to really push. We're going to be looking right down the edge of this wing right here. But what we're going to see we're going to bring these feathers up right in here. We're going to get a reversal. It's almost like hyperextending your arm, you know. I want to follow a nice arc. You see how I'm trying to follow a nice arc coming around. Oh, see, watch. I'm going to scoop that air. The air is scooping this way, and it's scooping there. Because it's making a transition from looking underneath, from looking underneath, to looking on the top. So we're making a nice transition right here. Keeping the arc. Scooping that air. There we go. Just like so. You feel that, you can feel that reversal. Actually, this is an extra drawing because we have the same one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. Because now we're, we're pretty much getting there on our cycle. We're gonna be able to let this cycle through here in just a minute. But I wanna, we're missing some drawings in there. There's a big jump right there. So I wanna add a drawing in there. So these wings have got to come down into this bottom position. And we're going to get a big reversal on those feathers and a big scoop of air. It's really scooping that air. Like so. Here's the elbow, the wrist. Really push those feathers back. It's going to be the same thing here. Now what you're going to see here, look at this. We're going to see the feathers kind of wrapping around. 
as this as this part scoops the air. Let's go ahead and get that tail in there. There, see that? Ooh, we're getting some nice movement there. I want to get another drawing right here. Now let's just go ahead and draw that in. We're going to want to kind of slow into this. But those feathers are still being reversed. They're still scooping. Like so. Working very fast and loose. Right into the wrist, right here. Once again, feathers are still scooping air like so. See that? So before I play this, I think I want to try, I'm just, it might be too much, but I'm going to try one more drawing right in here, just to smooth it out a little more. I, I hope it's not too much, but we'll, let's just give it a shot. If it's too much, I can always delete the drawing, but I really want you to feel the smoothness and the mechanics of this, of this flight. I'm animating it all on ones, meaning one drawing for every frame. All right, here we go. So here, and he's going to start to pull the wing up. And the reason I wanted to add this drawing is I want to get a little bit of a transition from the feathers being reversed one way to rever uh, to, you know being pulled this way to reverse the other way. I just want to feel that transition a little better. So it's you see that you can feel that transition into that a little better. So here. And I come up. Actually, I pulled that wrist up too high. Remember, I want to keep my perspective right, so the wrist is going to be down here. There we go. And we're going to get a nice transition into that reverse. There we go. So let's give it a shot. Here we've got, we've, I've taken you through the mechanics. Let's see what it looks like. So I'll bring it up big. You got a little jitter on the body, but at least you're getting a sense of what the, what the bird flapping is, what the, the wing flapping is. And so that, in a nutshell, is bird mechanics. You want, you know, when a bird is flying, <clears throat> and there's different, you know, the wings, they pump the air differently depending on what part of the flight they're in. This is kind of, you know, he's really doing a power flight right now to get some momentum. But once they're cruising, a lot of times they'll do little shallow wing beats. There's all kinds of different things that go into a bird's flight. But this, I wanted you to really understand that a, a, a bird flying is not merely wing up, wing down, and in-betweens. In-between, you know, in-betweens, in-between. It's, you know, there's, there's mechanics, there's physics, there's things that are going on within that flight. And if you can get those right, if you can understand what's going on, and it ha this, this goes along with you know, four-legged walks and all kinds of different things out in the world. If you can understand the physics and, and emulate that in your work, then it's gonna feel, physically, it's gonna feel that much more real. It's gonna give it weight. It's gonna give it believability. And that's what's important. That's how, along with the emotion and the acting and everything else, that's how we breathe life into our animation. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.